Mortgage Talk is on, where you receive good information for your mortgage needs, such as mortgage programs and foreclosure programs to help get you out of foreclosure. Stay tuned and hear what's coming your way. Right and good evening and welcome to Mortgage Talk. Hi, I'm Rick Montgomery. Glad to be here with you on Mortgage Talk. Man, back in tack with the Mortgage Talk team and glad to be back in tack with you. Glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and we love you for you tuning in. You are listening through WHPNN Radio Network. As we are streaming nationally throughout the internet, and we are streaming worldwide. We stream to over 200 countries that let us come into that neck of the woods to bring them mortgage talk. Isn't that something? Man, thanking them so much for them tuning in. We are mostly all of the major directories that Mortgage Talk is on. We stream from Block Talk Radio. And you can get us because this is where our history is at. You can go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash mortgage talk one. That's the number one symbol. And you can scroll down and see all of the 588 blogs out there. Or you can go on the internet and just type in mortgage talk one. Okay, hosted by me, of course, Rick Montgomery. Uh, our symbol is the lighthouse. Now, Mortgage Talk came on the internet in around June of 2012. We left in December of 2018 because we were building up WHPNN Radio Network, your internet radio station, and we wanted to get it off the ground, okay? Still got a lot of work to do, but we wanted to get it off the ground. So we so we took some time out working, you know, working a job and working there too was a lot. Oh, definitely for me and gaining weight <laughs> that I gotta lose is a lot for me. But we came back in November of 2020 last year, and we used my face as the symbol for the new mortgage talk. One show, and that's what we are, okay? Um, we're going to make some changes out there and probably put the word new out there. But anyway, that's how you can identify us. But, you, but we still have the old blog that has the lighthouse. And even some of the new show um, started with the lighthouse before it was switched over with my face on it. I didn't like that at first, but... You know, but that's where it is, and I'm going with it. That's what Karen Young Jordan is doing, our super producer and executive director. So we're going to follow that trend with her. Definitely, we are. And 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 no more resent, no more not resentment, but uh, no more fighting for me. Okay, well, I'm, and I ain't fight a lot, but you know, I mean, I'm going in that direction. She knows best, and that's what we're going to be doing. So mortgage talk. Is also on speaker.com. Man, we're on speaker.com right now. Glad to be a part of speaker.com because they do what? They do such a fantastic good job at speaker.com. And we're glad to be a part of speaker.com and have been a part of them for quite a while now. So be glad that we're on there with speaker.com. WHP Indian Radio is part of speaker.com because we have other shows like Club Saturday Night. Hosted by the Jam Master Soul, that's on there at eleven thirty each and every Saturday. They bring the club to you, BYOB, and also Friday Night Jams, hosted by the Jam Master Soul, on there at ten o'clock every Friday. Good Lord's will, we are there, and they be jamming the box with you. We meaning WHP NN Radio Network. Now we're in partners with a lot of companies. That is the reason for our show and many, many other shows too, but the reason for our show to be able to be on and we have to stay within the guidelines and rules and regulations for them too, as well as what is set for by us on speaker.com. And we're glad to be a part of speaker.com. 
Because of that, we're able to go through uh, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, okay, uh, Podcasters, Podchasers. Now, we ran into some problems early today with Podchasers, and I hope they, they have cleared that up because we, we were unable to pull our show. And so it means that some of you might have been unable to pull the show. Hopefully, that is fixed, Okay. We're also on iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify. Um, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Amazon Music. You can just type in our name. And we're on De- uh, Deezer. There's a note out there, and I just can't pronounce his name for nothing. But, uh, but we're on those directories to help spread the word of Mortgage Talk and to stream nationally. We're on YouTube also, by the way. Now, we don't do any visual contents on YouTube. Not yet. We're working on that right now. So we'll be able to visual, so you'll be able to see us while we're on YouTube. Okay? We're on all of our social media. I haven't done any live show of Mortgage Talk on our social media, but we will. We're going to start doing that just as well. So, so we're really going to be working the visual concept. Uh, we also are working on a Zoom platform that we can do that too. So we're really trying to put a lot of good stuff together. I'm excited about that. And we are on uh, Periscope. Now, we heard that Periscope was supposed to shut down by by Twitter. I don't know how true that is, you know. We, uh, I don't know, was that some fake news that we got or was that the real thing? So I really don't know uh, exactly what's happening on that. But uh, we kind of pulled back a little bit because we thought on January the 20th is going to be shut down and it's not. So I don't know if it's fake news or, 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 or what it is. But what I can say is that we're back on with it. We are going to stick with it until they don't have it anymore. Uh, we do um, Periscope now. We set the trend. We're going to be doing it every Monday with Periscope. Every Monday we're going to do Periscope. Okay. Uh, we're trying to pinpoint it an exact time. So we've been experimenting with the time. It was on at 4 o'clock, on at 5 o'clock, you know, on at 6 o'clock or something like that. So we're going to pinpoint a exact time of when we're going to be able to do Periscope, and I believe that it will be before five o'clock. I think it's going to be like on a four o'clock uh, uh, type issue. So, so we see how that how that flows. Good Lord's will will be on next Monday with Periscope. Now we were doing a little bit uh, on Friday. We are also on Periscope Friday uh, on the third Friday of every month. We are on Periscope, just like Mortgage Talk. We are on the third Friday of every month for Mortgage Talk at 7 o'clock, okay? The first three weeks, we're on Tuesday for Mortgage Talk at 6.30. The last Tuesday of the month coming up, uh, which is tomorrow, we will not air, but we will air on Wednesday, Okay? And that's only on the last Tuesday where we air on Wednesday at 6.30, okay? And that's prime time. So that's Mortgage Talk, and, and that's how we have things done. And we thank you for you tuning in and for you being here. We simulcast through Blog Talk Radio. Uh, we didn't simulcast this week, so we did Blog Talk separately, and we're doing uh, Speaker.com separately. But we usually try to unify it, but, but we didn't get that done this week. Okay. So the name of our topic is definition of a clear property title. The name of our topic is definition of a clear property title. Now we went a little longer on a live show when we did Periscope because Periscope is kind of like our initiation into YouTube. We're on YouTube right now, by the way, so if you go to YouTube and type in Mortgage Talk 1, you'll get us on YouTube, but you'll hear us, but you won't see us, at least not yet. 
It's going to be where you can go to YouTube and you can see us on YouTube. Okay. That's going to happen real, real soon this year. And, and so we're working, trying to put that together. So Periscope is kind of like our initiation. So Mortgage Talk is on Periscope. So you want to see what it looked like live and see me talk. You can see me talk on Periscope. Okay. And I will be doing some live shows. Uh, is my understanding we're going to be switching in and out on the third uh, Friday of every month. We'll do Periscope for that Friday. And then and then maybe the next month we'll do um, um, uh, Facebook. Then the next month we'll do uh, Instagram. So we're going to switch it up. We're going to be switching up in there. Okay. To so we can try to get the audience base up there and and uh, certainly get you to tune in to Mortgage Talk. We appreciate you. Remember, Mortgage Talk is under the umbrella of Information Center, where we give you nothing but the facts within the facts, none of our own personal opinion, but just the facts. Because Mortgage Talk believe in an educated consumer is indeed the best customer. Okay? So with that said, I want to go into our definition of a clear title, property title. That's what I want to go into. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So a clear title is a title without any type of liens or levy from a creditors or other parties that would pose questions as to legal ownership. An example, an homeowner with a clear title is the sole undisputed heavyweight champion of the world of owner of his property. He is the sole owner of the property. A clear title, which is a mortgage term, and this is what mortgage talk is all about, help giving you mortgage term because it's, because the mortgage terminology is the language of the industry enabling you to be able to speak that language and get answers to your questions without getting transferred around the Marbury bush when you're calling in to get answers. You heard me say this, that there is no such thing as a mortgage note. That is not the proper terminology. That's a street terminology. And all you have to do is listen to a person talk that street lingo and you know they don't know. And this is why some people have a hard time trying to reach certain departments by the language in which they speak. So Mortgage Talk believes into it an educated consumer is indeed the best customer. And so the best customer understands the language. Amen. So your promissory note, proper terminology for what you're paying, or your note, or your property note is the right terminology, especially when you call it into a bank and you're identifying your property. Okay. So clear title is a mortgage term and other language relating to clear title is a clean title, a just title, a free and clear title. Okay. These are the language used to identify a, cl a clear title. A clear title is necessary for any real estate transaction because it it figuratively establish who is the property owner. The title company must do a title search to check for claims and liens of any kind against the title before it can be deemed clear. 
Are you with me? Or, or am I by myself? I heard a wise man say. The title company is licensed and bonded. That's a protection for you. Because a title company is also an insurance company that offer title insurance. And I'm going to talk about that a, a little later. Okay. A title company is also an insurance company. All right. Who makes, what makes a title dirty? What makes a title dirty? Now, before I go into that, let me just close out on a title company. Okay. Let me just close out on that. Because a title company that I mentioned earlier that is licensed and bonded. That's a protection for you in case down the road a lien sudden pops up on that title. They can be held liable, either, either negotiate that, clear off the title, or find whatever release that they need to get it off title or pay for the lien because they sign off stating that this was a clear title. That's why it's important to close with a title company. Okay? It's too important for you not to close with a title company. Don't not do that. Now, you're going to find lawyers that people close into law offices. They're not a title company. However, the lawyer is signed up with a title company and the lawyer is licensed and bonded, by the way. And the title company is licensed and bonded. And the lawyer acts as an agent for the title company. The title company makes all preparations of all the paperwork. Okay. And send that package over to the attorney's office. The title company does the same thing for mortgage brokers. Who's also licensed and bonded. And some of them have permission from the title company to do closings at their office. And the title company prepares the closing documents so it can do the closing. Okay. And they act as an agent for the title company. All right. What makes a dirty title? Errors, erroneous errors, and surveys, or unsolved building codes. And violations. Presence of a lien can create a cloud on the title. Another a mortgage term. A cloud title. A clouded title. A cloud title is a unreleased lien which invalidates or impairs the owner title to the property. Title issues can, ar can arise in situations of separations, divorce, Heirs or inheres not being properly documented. Overall, a clear title helps to show whether there are any outstanding financial responsibility to the property and is necessary to demonstrate that an owner has the right to sell the property. An example of a cloud title. But you can still sell the property. Did you not know that? 
the owner must still owe, well, the owner who still owe payments on an outstanding mortgage can still sell a property. Let me explain. It's kind of like that your hands are dirty and you and you walk up to a big sink and you stick your dirty, muddy hands in the water and you wash them off and now you pull your hands out and the water is clean and you're able to shake hands to the new owner. In other words, the seller is selling the property to the buyer. No other liens is on the property, but a mortgage lien, which makes the title still cloudy. You heard me say that you cannot sell a, a property with a clouded title, and that's true. But there are a circumstance that allow it because the title is going to be washed at closing. The seller who's selling the property and the buyer who's buying it, its lender is going to pull title. And when the lender pulls title, the lender is looking for the name that the seller who is selling the property is looking to make sure that that individual is legally bounded to sell the property. There's no other sellers out there. There's no other percentage that another seller has to be at the closing table to give rights to the property. The lender is also looking for time of ownership. Because in some states, like the state of Illinois, flipping that terminology is considered illegal. In other states, flipping is fine. And flipping is when you buy a property for cheap. Maybe it's a distressed property. And you did a few cosmetic works and uh, fix the property up. And now you have earned about close to $90,000 in equity. Now, this is a true story. So as a 20 years mortgage broker, I can give you quite a few of those stories. Okay? Not false stories, but true stories. So the equity growth in the property was 90000 but that current owner only owned the property for two weeks or 30 days. It takes 120 days for your name to be on the property. Whereas if they pull title in California after that 120 day, your name, Mr. Buyer, is going to pop up. They pull title in Denver, Colorado. Your name is going to show up on that title. If they pull it in 30 days, you're probably not going to show up across the United States, maybe in a few states. But you're not going to show up across. That's why it takes about 120 days. So the lender is looking for stability of ownership. How long has this owner owned the property? And you could find yourself in an interesting situation with your lender telling you, pick another property. And you want to know why? Because you want this one. And they said, because the owner hasn't owned the property long and we refuse to give a loan. Okay? You will find some lenders like that. Should it be like that? Well, you know, because they're like that because there's an opening gap in the title because that particular investor and, and you do find these investors that do this just own the property based off a of quick claim for two weeks or purchase. And it takes 120 days before they get on a title. And then now they selling the title to you. They selling the property to you. So now it has to be washed 
from the previous owner's name to their name, washed again from their name to your name. And in between that, things normally sometimes can happen. Like an heir pops up out of nowhere and say, no one informed me of this. I own 23% of the property. And I'm going to talk about heirs in just, in just the next segment. I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to go into a little bit more details with you. So overall, a clear title helps to show whether there are any outstanding financial responsibilities to the property and is necessarily to demonstrate that an owner has the right the sole right to sell the property. That's what the clear title does. Because the lender understands that the seller is selling you the property. So they're going to, and they're going to provide the funds to pay the seller out. The title company insure it, insures it and insure it with a title insurance policy. I'm going to talk about that too in just a bit. I got some shocking news for you on that. Especially new homeowners. And even on some of you old homeowners. So they know that they got that protection. The title company is going to pay off the existing lien and, re and receive a deed and a release of lien. These are some of the documents that they're going to get back. And they usually get it back within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. But they guarantee your lender that this will be a clear title, even though it's currently a clouded title. Okay. And they're going to, and once they get these docs back, they're able to post up, and a copy of these docs, a copy of the release. And a copy of the deed that the seller owns the property to sell off the property to you. Even though your loan paid the seller off that paid off his previous mortgage company. Now, your name can go on the property as, as said owner, and a deed is in preparation, has been drawn up with your name on, but sent to the title company to hold, well, not title company, but to the lender to hold until you pay for the loan. So that's how you can sell a clouded title that's going to be washed clean then your name on, and now there's a lien on the title, but the title was clean before your name can go on. Almost like Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Got to move on. An example of a cloud title, but you can still sell the property. I gave you that example. Once the title is, is clean, the deed can be registered in the new owner's name. As I mentioned earlier, the deed is the legal document showing who owns the property. If someone is buying a home, the title must be clear before the new owner's name can be put on the deed. And I explain how that process goes. A cloud title, the property could potentially, listen to this, listen, the property could be potentially be sold while liens are active. You see, there's no law there's no law that doesn't require a lien to be 
removed before the sale of the property. Say it again. The law doesn't require the lien to be paid to be removed before the sale of a property. It is your lender that requires that and says, I will not loan if I can't get a guarantee of a clear title. And I explain how that can happen. The buyer wouldn't be able to get the mortgage or home equity loan because the bank uh, would research and discover the past liens, which would have to be cleared before the bank would even agree to give up the money for the purchase cost of the title. So if there's any other liens on there, tax liens, Okay. Mechanic liens, things of that nature, they're going to require the buyer to pay out those liens and come up with the proper documents that those liens can be shown on title satisfied before they'll let their buyer purchase. Now, some of them are lenient and they'll give you 30 day time to get that cleared up. Some of them are not, and they'll say, uh-uh, and they'll tell the buyer, you got to find another house. Nope, wouldn't have nothing to do with them. Because they do not want some unexpected things to pop up. Even though they're going to have a title insurance to protect them. I'm going to tell you about that just a little bit. Other problems that can occur on the title usually come from, from heirs. People that inherit the property. Complications, you find this on older properties where heirs of a prior owner may still have some claim to the real estate. For instance, prior owner may have grant may have granted a portion of the property to an heir, which is in a percentage form who never took any interest, any responsibility in the upkeep of the property as an owner. Now, example of that is John and Paul, mom died, and they were the heirs to the property. And maybe she had a will, or maybe she didn't. They are the live siblings, so the property is going to be divided among them. Later on down the road, years have passed, John passed away. But John had a will. And in his will, he left his percentage of ownership to his three children, who would divide up that 50% among them. Okay? So when their uncle goes to sell a property, he needs their permission to sell a property and the proceeds will be divided. 50% will be divided among the three siblings and the other 50% John has. Justifi justifiably so and right. Okay? Some heirs that have the property, sometimes don't file the proper paperwork. Okay? They don't have a will. And that can cause complications. Especially among siblings and cousins that could be a part of this whole thing. And I'm going to tell you a story in a, in a bit about a lady who owned a two-flat and her siblings... Didn't get along with her. Didn't try to help her in any way. But her sister's son did and wind up living with her because he's her nephew and he did a lot. And when she struck ill, she went to the bank and signed an authorization giving him permission to pay the mortgage 
and collect information from the mortgage company. And the mortgage company can collect information from him because she gave legal rights and signed the necessary documents, giving him legal rights to pay for the property. But she didn't leave a will to give him legal rights of ownership. So once the siblings found out that she passed away, they immediately put the house in probate so only they can be looked upon as the living surviving siblings and it will be divided among them where their nephew gets nothing and they just cut him completely out of the picture and that was their major objective to do. Even though she left a document that says he will, will take over the responsibility of paying the mortgage. But she never gave him legal rights to the property. Wow. Okay. Now it usually happen on old properties and on older generations because what you got to understand is back in the early 60s and 50s, black people couldn't buy, can hardly buy property. It was a privilege for FHA to, to come out allowing black people to put a small percentage down, normally 3%, and still obtain a good credit scoring even though these companies were attacking them, giving them credit, and then attacking ex extensive fees on them when they were late, forcing them into a struggle payment mode before blackballing them on credit. Okay. This is what a lot of companies was out there doing during that time. So our people, our grandma and grandpa, they didn't understand how this thing worked. That's why a lot of them stayed away from it. Because they didn't understand how it worked. As they got into the late 60s and 70s, then, then some of them start to experiment with it. But was very nervous. That they can lose out. And some did and some didn't. So you have to understand that back in that time, you got to go in that time. Back in that time, no information was given for grandma and grandpa to draw a clear understanding of the program FHA that they were dealing with. They only, they only understood some of the basics. Okay. So the said heir rights as a partial owner may have passed on to his or her descendants who may not be aware. Other problems under, under a heir, under a heir, if owners never file a deed with the county clerk office, to transfer ownership of the property. Those are one of the biggest problems, especially among my people, that is done. To transfer ownership, even on a VA property where a lot of this has occurred, whereas the, under VA, VA holds the invested interests on title to the property. You don't hold anything. You list it on the title, Mr. Buyer, but you list it as a landlord. Not owner, a landlord. Remember, possession of a clear title is important to prevent insurance fraud. You got people out there who specializes in paid properties. And they go after our mothers and our fathers that are out there. 
especially those that are, that are separated or live alone, they go out there to prey on them and to get them to sign documents, hidden documents, that they don't know what they signed, thinking that they signed for a petition and they'll sign that their property over with the documents underneath. They didn't know that. They didn't have, they had no clue. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. However, the buyer wouldn't be able to get a mortgage or home equity loan because the bank would research and discover the past lien on that property, as I mentioned earlier. Some of the other problems that take place, as I mentioned, like the hair problems, that is, that ownership is divided into percentages. Separation from, from two people or divorce caused that problem. Sometimes the files are, are never filed properly or filed at all. It can happen. A person who buys a property with another person and then they break up and the other person moves away to another state or across, or across country and they've been separated now for over 13 years and now the guy goes to sell the property and finds out that he can't sell the property, that he has to contact that individual so she can sign off her rights. And I have dealt with cases like that. One in Beverly Hills here in Chicago where they had those little mini mansions between a school teacher and his ex. And that wasn't easy because she still had bitterness in her because she loved them. They picked the property out together and she thought they was going to live in a, in a house for everlasting, moved in. And, and a few years later, they broke up. His credit was better. She, she had just started college. Her English was getting better. She was um, a Chinese lady. And he was an African American. He wind up marrying a black woman. She wasn't mad because he married a black woman. She was angry. Because, it could be any woman because you took her love. You took her man. And now you're going to live in a house that they picked out together. And she was angry. And she was angry about that. Okay. Because they bought the house together. Even though he had the better credit, they bought the house together. So she separated. She, she moved away. But he, but he could not refinance that property without her coming back to sign that it's okay for him to refinance the property. And at the same time as his mortgage broker to get her to sign off on the property. And for the client to know that she's entitled to half of the equity. It hurt her. And, and as she said, I, I will want to do this to you. But I'm going to be a better person. She went to school. She studied to be a doctor. And she's in her last year of a medical school. And he's a school teacher. And so she was not going to become a, a, a negative stigma for him because she still loved him. And she didn't want anything in return. And she agreed to sign the quick claim, quicken her interest away and giving it to him. Man, what a big woman she was to do that. Wow.
And I mean, wow. But these heritage problems of a percentage of ownership or a separation or a divorce is what caused a lot of these problems. In which couples separate but never went through divorce procedures. You got people out there that's been separated for 13 years or 14 years and never filed for a divorce and is legally married but living with somebody else. If a couple owns a home jointly, title problems occur where one goes to sell the home with the other's name on title and it won't happen. That's a no-no. Okay? You're going to have to be able to clear that person off the title before you're able to get peace. In mind, peace in your household and around your household. Wow. Other problems that can occur on, on a title is a trust. A title trust. Now that's a good thing because you'll find People who put their property in trust do so to protect their interests. And usually these are the people with deep pockets. These are the big money maker people. Okay? It's, it's not your everyday Joe Muss. These are your big everyday money workers. And they put their property in trust to protect their interests. In case they accidentally bump in, into you and step on your foot and so... You, you want to sue them because you know that they're worth a lot of money. Okay? So, so to protect their interests, they'll put their property in trust. Now, there are trust companies out there that you can go to to put your property in trust to protect your interests. So when a title is pulled, your name shows up nowhere as owner of that property. That that title company's name is because it, it is a trust company. Named on a title such as um, let's see, such as well. I want to go into the names on the title in just a bit. I don't want to jump too far ahead. So the trust allows you the protection from losing from hackers that may find out that you're worth money and bump into you, have an accident with you involved so they can sue you. Okay, so you got to be careful out there. Got to be careful out there. You can take a property out of trust. My educated consumer, the best customer, they 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 gonna know this. They'll know that they can sign the property out of trust, refinance the property, get a lower rate, and and lower their uh, their payments, and that's a tangible agreement, and pay off any debt that they have. And the property will be then be offered to them to close on the property. And that's what they look for. So by them having excellent credit, because it's usually for people who put the, the property in, in trust, normally has excellent credit. Okay, Very rarely you find someone with challengeable credit and their property is in trust. So they put 
their property and trust and they know they can qualify for a loan because they know what their credit scores are and they know they, they're 800, 830, or 900. You see, back in the day, it uh, used to be a 700 or a 730 credit score was the bomb. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. So they can go to the title company and there are title companies that offer trust and there are banks that offer trust. In Chicago, downtown, there's a bank called Northern Trust. That's a trust company too. Northern Trust is for the wealthy. And they keep us non-hackers out of there because they set a standard and amount that must go into an account for you to open up. And if you ain't making that money, you ain't getting no account at no Northern Trust. Other trust companies like Standard Bank and Trust. Other trust companies out there, you have to do your research and find a trust company and put your property in storage so you can preserve it. What else can cause a dirty title is open permit. I mean, open permits. That you got to get closed. Mineral rights. And that usually take place for property that's in Dallas, Houston, and in uh, Texas. Mineral rights will show up on your title. And show up on a separation form too. And, and a person can own a property but sell off their mineral rights. Mineral rights. So a new owner owns a property. Title company signed off on it. He comes home and kick up his heel and discover that maybe less than five or six feet away there's people on his property that's been digging up his property. And, and he's disgusted because they messed up his lawn. And so he wants to know, what are you going to do about this? And so he's operating on an anger tip at an anger level, hollering and screaming and cursing until one, one of the construction people rolls up and told him to get the hell out of there before he have him arrested. And he's like, have me arrested. This is my property. You're tearing up my property. No, they're not. They have they have the, the uh, mineral rights to what's in the ground. And they have the right to dig up and get it out. But they also have a right under professionalism to, to put everything back like it was. But that's on a contingency base on how that individual operate. Under trust, you can pull your property out from trust. You'll get a documentation from the trust company and to prove that you are said owner of the property and then You can sign the house back into trust. Okay. So trust is a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a great thing to have. It's a wonderful thing to have when you want to hide your interest in a property. Okay. That's trust. And I had to get that to you again. Got to reinforce that. Other things that could be on a title that can cause a cloud title is open permits, mineral rights, as I explained that to you, and HOA 
fees. HOA fees sticks to my crawl more than any other fees. If HOA fees is associated with condominiums, I understand. Okay, because a lot of HOAs condominiums are very good. If HOA is associated with townhouses, I understand. Because a lot of HOAs are very good. But if the HOA is listed for a single family home in which they don't do a damn thing for you. But you paying them $200 a month is a waste. I wouldn't do it and I don't understand those that do. But you got them. Yes, you do. You do have them. Now, I'm going to give you some more examples of an HOA from my neck of the woods. Because if an HOA can't tell you what they can do for you as a single family homeowner, you don't need no damn HOA. But they're fooling people coming into your neck of the woods. They're buying your home or a home similar to you. And they get them to believe that they can't make that purchase if they don't have it sign up with the HOA. And that is not true. An HOA cannot dominate unless they have the majority of, of homeowners part of their association. If they don't have that, they cannot force newcomers coming in that's buying a single family home to sign up with their HOA. They can't do that. They cannot do that. Just to let you know. For single family homes, I fail to see what an HOA can do for them. Now you got some people that say, hey, look, I live in a gated community, so, so my HOA does this for me. What does they do for you? Can you justify to me what does an HOA do for you in a single family home? Because I don't see what they do. Zero what they do. So that's my reason for not liking HOA on single family homes. And I say I'm going to run for mayor. And when I do, especially in, in uh, my neck of the wood, I'm going to make it quite clear that an HOA cannot force no one new to join them. Definitely cannot force the previous homeowners to join you because you don't have the majority. And I'm going to limit them into townhouses and condominiums if they can't spell out what they are doing for these people to earn that their money. They have to pay for that. They have to explain that. And if they're unable to explain, then, then we don't need the HOA. They won't exist. But if they can explain, then we can continue their existing. Another thing that you got to be aware of on title is the zoning. The property zoning. You see, if you have a single family home and you sell your rights off to a, a company that wants to build a mall, and for you, it's fine until they discover that it's not fine. Do you see the HOA fees? It's not, it's not fine. If you don't check the zoning in your area, the zoning could state that only residential property can be built on the land in which you purchase. Not a single family home. Zoning can determine whether a residential property or a commercial property can be put up there. A residential, I mean, a, a zoning could say only residential properties can be here. And you'll find most of these like in Dallas, Texas and and, and Houston and, and uh, places of, of, of that nation. But you also find them all over too, by the way. 
So if you purchase that property and burns down, and then you would have built a house back up, and uh, you discover you can't build a house back up, and so you don't understand why. Because of the zoning. You're like, wait a minute. They never stopped me before. Well, well, maybe when you bought it, they didn't pass the zoning laws yet. Or, or the or the loaning statutes yet. Okay? So you need to check your zoning before buying a residential property. Now, I'm going to go into I'm going to go into what is a title search and a title insurance. That's very important for you to understand. What is a title search and what is a title insurance? What are the two and why is it important for me to have them? You need to know this and I'm going to give it to you. Okay, we're going to take an inspirational song break and I'm going to come right back and we're going to close the show out with what is a title search and a and a title insurance. You're going to see just how important that that is and why that exists and for you to be careful because you don't have to pay for it. And I'm going to tell you what you don't have to pay for it and why. This is Mortgage Talk. I'm Rick Montgomery. Back in a moment with more of Mortgage Talk. But inspirational song break is right here.
right. And welcome back to Mortgage Talk. Glad that you're with us and we appreciate you for you being here with us. That's our inspirational song. And we, we hope that you enjoyed it because we did. Um, we want to wrap up so we can close out the show. And we are and we're talking on what is a title search and title insurance. Following this, I'm, I got to give you Black Man News coming up, and I'm going to do so after we finish this up here. So, a title insurance, now listen to me carefully on this now. A title insurance will defend against a lawsuit attacking the title or reimburse the insured for the attacking, I'm, I'm sorry, we, they will reimburse the insured for the actual monetary loss incurred upon to the dollar amount of insurance provided by the policy. Okay. One of the first title insurance company was known as Law Property Assurance and Trust Society, and they were formed in 1853 in Pennsylvania. Okay. The actual commonly used title insurance is a form of indemnity. Now, I have a hard time trying to say that word, so I'm going to spell it for you. I-M-D-E-M-N-I-T-Y. That's a mortgage term. Indemnity insurance. That, per, that protects lenders. Listen. That protect lenders and homeowners from financial losses sustained from a defect in a title to a property. Now there's a charge to that and that's normally in the fee at the title company. And a lot of times these lawyers will go over it and say, uh, you know, okay, this is the title insurance. You know, I mean, I mean, it's something that, that you have to have. And then they move on very, very quickly. But an educated consumer, which is indeed the best customer, and that's what Mortgage Talk is promoting, an educated consumer should be able to ask the questions and get answers to questions on why is this charge on me and what am I am paying for? Don't tell me it's a tradition because a tradition doesn't mean that it's right. And tradition doesn't mean that I have to accept it. And tradition doesn't mean that I have to pay for it. So you need answers to your questions. And an educated consumers are going to do their homework to determine this. And they're going to listen to mortgage talk. Tell your friends and tell many to listen to mortgage talk. Because we promote an educated consumer, which is indeed the best customer. Got to move on. So we understand what a indemnity insurance is. Other insurance companies, title companies, are companies like Fidelity National Title. That's a good company. First American Title Insurance Company, another one. Chicago Title is a big title insurance company and a good company. And Stewart Title. These are large title companies. Now you find other small title companies like in Illinois here. We got one call and, and, and there are several one, but we have one here called residential title. Now these small companies are underwritten by the bigger companies. Stewart title underwrites for residential title. An educated consumer, the best customer, finds out that they're going to close their loan, whether they're purchasing or not, or selling through residential title. They want to look it up and see how strong is residential title. And when they do their research, they discover that residential title 
is underwritten by Stuart Title. That should give them some kind of comfort. When they find out that this other title company is underwritten by Chicago Title, that should give them some kind of comfort zone. Because these are highly strong recommended title that are used throughout the industry and very well respected based off their reputation. So it's give them comfort zones to know this. So if you need a mortgage to purchase a real estate, your lender will likely require you to buy a title policy from a title insurance company, okay? Now, I want you to know this. It's very important for you to know this because I bet you you didn't know this. There are two types of title insurance policy. One title insurance policy is for the lender. The other title insurance policy is for you, the homeowner. Don't get it confused. Homeowner's insurance protects you, Mr. Homeowner. It's an insurance policy. And it sticks to my craw when I hear people grinch and frown up on insurance and then wish like hell that they had it later. Everything you do is insured. Did you not know that United States is insured? Did you not know that Chicago, Illinois is insured? Colorado is insured. Nebraska is insured. Did you know that some of the villages and smaller cities within those states are insured? When you think about insurance, think about protection. Protection for you, protection for your family. Protection. When you think about homeowners insurance, you just have a comfort zone that you are protected and so is your family. When you think about mortgage protection insurance, you know that you are protected and so is your family in case something happened to you. And you are protected even being alive in case something happened, you are protected. Your saving is protected. What you have accumulated is protected because you have mortgage protection insurance. And you have homeowner's insurance for fire damage and etc. If you have life insurance, you are protected. Insurance is a base of protection for you and family. If you have auto insurance, you are protected. If you have an annuity, which is another form of insurance, you are protected. If you have the IUL index, universal life insurance policy, you are protected. A lot of you have the 401k at work, a contribution plan that if you look at 60 minutes on the 401k on YouTube, it's going to educate you, and some of you already know, and some of you don't. It's going to educate you to know that 401k ain't for you. You can't change anything if you're losing in the 401k. You have to wait to the next enrollment period. That's a three-month period of time. Meanwhile, you can lose thousands and thousands of dollars. But you can roll over that 401k or that Roth I want into a index universal life policy with a higher yield return on your money protection. Tax deferred protection. You can borrow from it anytime you need it or whatever you need it for, it's private, and you don't have to disclose it 
even when you're purchasing a home and you're going to use some of it, some of the money as a down payment. You don't have to disclose that you got an insurance policy. I wouldn't. That's why they ask you, do you have an insurance policy? No, I don't. Just, just what I got on the job, which is normally a term policy. You don't have to tell them that you got an IUL, a retirement policy for yourself. You don't have to share that. An IUL holds a higher interest return, but dig this. Your money is never invested in the market. The IUL only mimics the market. So the, int- so the money invested and the interest occur, you never will lose it. And if the, when the market falls, or if the market falls, and if it does, you will even get a 0.26 credit annually, which is higher than any 0.1% that a bank can give you. You understand what I'm saying? You're protected. If you had a variable IUL index universal life policy, then your money is invested in the market. You get a stronger return on your money with a higher interest, but you had a risk factor. And risk is good if you want to make a lot of money. If you're afraid of risk, then don't do that. Because if the market falls, you can lose everything. That's a veritable index universal life policy. Or even a veritable annuity fix. But a index universal life policy, it only mimics. And it has variable aspects that you can invest depending upon the company. Whether you invest in gold, whether you invest into the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, whether you invest into the real estate, mortgage-backed securities, or whether you invest no matter what the commodity that the company is offering, some of them offer three, some of them offer four, and there are some companies that offer you six avenues to invest. So you can put 10% over here, 25% over there. In other words, when you make your mortgage payment, they take a percentage of your mortgage payment and deposit it into a cash reserve account that accumulate interests on a daily basis, equaling up to a monthly base when they total it all up for the month. Sometimes if there's a loss, there's a loss for that month. At the end of the year, you get an annual credit for the IUL, which is usually pretty high. Sometimes it can be 6%, 9%, 10%, 12%, 14%. Every company will cap you. Some companies cap you at 12%. Some cap you at 11.5%. Some cap you at 15%. In other words... When your annual percentage rate is determined, and they do so because they mimic the stock market every day, and they add the rate up for that 30 days or that 31 days, and that's the rate for that month. And 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 when they go the next month, if you have a loss in there because the market fluctuated and you come out to be a negative, at the end of the year, they add up all the negative months that you had and all the positive months that you have. They take the total of the negative and minus it from the total of the positive, and that becomes your annual percentage rate credit to your account. They have you at a floor cap. So maybe with this company, the floor cap is at 12%, and the interest rate added up annually credit to 145 well, you get the 12% and the and the remaining goes to the mortgage company and you want them to have it because you want them to be profitable. Yes, you do. You want them to be around. Some companies will, will offer 15% cap. 
And this is how you determine which one that you want to go with, which company. Shop it around and let me make my decision based off uh, the, the commodities that I can invest in. And what is my floor cap? I want a higher floor cap or I'm satisfied with that floor cap. This is how you you purchase IUL. And guess what? You can change it anytime you want to. You can't do that with a 401k. So I want to explain that to you. And that's normally used for retirement. And I do that for my teachers and my law enforcement officers. I do that for them. And and for my military people and, and and my federal employee people. Get them away from that 401k. Just go to 60 Minutes and look up 401k and listen. It's going to shock you and blow your mind. And you can talk to some people who have it and they'll tell you. They can't wait to get for money because they don't lost $10,000. They don't lost $5,000. They don't lost big money dealing with this 401k. All right. So just give me some insights. Got to move on. So like I said, there are two types of title insurance, one for the lender and one for the owner. Almost every lender will require you, dig this, now dig this, almost every lender will require you to pay for a lender title insurance policy. And this policy protects the lender, not you. And it's and it cured into the fee. Did you know that you can turn that down and say, I'm not paying for that? And I'm going to tell you how. Let me move on and I'm going to come back and tell you how. Because this part is important. The owner... The new homeowner can purchase a title insurance, which is usually optional for homeowners, but highly recommended. Did you hear what I said? Owner title insurance that homeowners can get, especially you new homeowners, is usually optional. But it comes highly recommended. Because without it, you'll be left footing the bill for all the costs of resolving that title claim. Why are you paying for title insurance for the lender to protect them and leave your butt hanging in the wind? Because that title insurance policy do not protect you. It protects the lender. How can I not pay the lender? Because I bought some for myself. I got mines. You get yours, Mr. Lender. I'm not paying for it. Well, if it if was, was part of Title Three, And if you don't pay for it, we won't loan you the money. And if you don't, you can't break this deal. I will sue you. Uh-oh, we're talking to an educated consumer. We, we, we better back up. Because they know you don't have to pay for them. But a lot of us don't know that. Now, I want you to know this. You can purchase two types of owner title insurance policies. One is called a basic. The other one is called a enhanced owner title insurance. An enhanced policy offer more coverages for things like mechanic liens or boundary dispute. Whereas the basic title insurance policy covers for things such as mistakes in a legal description of your property or human error. Be aware that it will have some exclusions, particularly in cases where violation of a building code occurs after you bought your home. 
Now, the average cost for a title insurance cost is about $1,000 per policy. Now, that amount can depend. It can it, it will depends on the price you pay for your home. The cheaper the amount, the lower it would be. The higher the amount, it's gonna it's gonna rise. And it also depends on state to state. Every state has a capping point, okay, that they assess for the title insurance company to charge. Okay, title insurance premium can vary. From a couple of hundred dollars to a couple of thousand dollars. So be aware of that. You need to have title insurance. And you can have owner title insurance. So so you're not just paying for the title insurance first policy that will protect you and the homeowner. While the process of cleaning one clouded title to free up to put you on. And to form a deed to, to have you on and ends at, at at closing. That's why the lender wants you to purchase title insurance that and pay for it for, for them that will protect their interest, not yours, protect their booty, leaving your booty out. And you can purchase your own. And when and when, when time to close, they say, "Oh, you go, oh, you take this off, no sorry, Bob. I'm not gonna pay for two. And you're gonna have to get it with the title company that you close with. You can go to any other title insurer company and purchase it. And you and you provide those documents at closing that you have it. And then you can say, "I'm not paying for the lenders. Let the, I got mine. So let them get theirs. And you can reject it." And it cannot force you to take it. And it cannot threaten you not to close or you or, or you can threaten them back. If you don't close this loan today, I will sue you. Uh-oh. An educated consumer. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay? Just want you to know that. You need to know that. That's too important for you not to know that. I thank you so much for you listening to Mortgage Talk. I hope that you continue to listen to us each and every Tuesday at 6.30. We're on. And we try to do a simulcast. But but with speaker.com, we come on a little later if we can't do a simulcast, okay? And sometimes we can't for whatever mechanical reasons, but we try to. And maybe it's good that we do one with one show and then do and, and then do one with speaker.com. But we do like to try to kill two birds with one stone and do it and do a simulcast. But we're on Block Talk Radio at 6:30 every Tuesday, except for the last Tuesday of the month. And we're on twice on the third week of the month on a Monday at 6.30 and on Friday at 7 o'clock. But on speaker.com, we're going to pump this baby up to be on Tuesday with them or we're going to be on each and every Monday. We're going to be on each and every Monday. Not so late. Got we kind of like experiment on which should be a, a comfort zone for us, but but we're gonna be on at five o'clock. So we can give you the, the good news that you have. But we're gonna try to do a simulcast. So so don't worry, when I come on, I will announce whether we are simulcasting in from Block Talk Radio with speaker.com. I I'll definitely let you know that. We're on YouTube, so you can listen to us on YouTube. There's no there is no um visualization of me yet we're, we're, we're working on that and every third week of the month and every Monday we'll be on Periscope until they decide to take it away if that's true 
by Twitter. I don't know. We we could have got some fake news out there. I don't know. But if it's not true, we we we're, we're going to be on Periscope every Monday. See, so you can check us out. And every Monday, we're going to be on Periscope around by four o'clock. So you can see us live as we do our show. And then we'll go into on that on that Monday to speaker dot com. So I thank you so much for you listening to us. I thank you for giving me the time today. I appreciate you so wholeheartedly. And I ask that you come back and join us again on a Monday. And and once again, thank you for listening to Mortgage Talk. I'm Rick Montgomery. And the good Lord's will, I'll see you again next Monday on Mortgage Talk on speaker.com. Or on Tuesday when we do a simulcast. We're working to get our stuff together. So we're, so we're trying to make sure that the word can come out to you. Thank you for listening to Mortgage Talk. Good night, everybody. <laughs>